Apologies if you've tuned into the channel this weekend to see the second half of the blue video from last week. But have no fear, not only is that video on the way, but there will be some blue dial models featured on this list as well. Instead, we're going to be focusing specifically on gemstone dials, which have grown in popularity recently in the budget sector and have become a lot more accessible price-wise. With that sentiment in mind, I thought it would be a great time to look at what I feel are the best offerings on the market with a top 10. The rule set that I've implemented for this video is as follows. Each watch featured on the list must have an actual gemstone dial. They must be available for less than $1,000. And where a price is based on the second hand market, I flag that up. Finally, only one watch can feature from each brand for the sake of variety. Given the nature of the video, I have also tried to cast my net wide in terms of the specific gemstones featured. And I think it's fair to say for some gemstones, it's slim pickings for choice. Hence the quotation marks around best in the video title. That is no accident. Before we begin, it's probably a good idea to quickly clarify what we mean by a gemstone. It's a semi-precious mineral crystal, rock or organic gem, which covers materials like lapis, mother of pearl and adventuring. With all that said, let's get into the video. At the moment, as far as I'm aware, Cradle produces one watch, the HE2, which retails for around $53,000. I believe I'm right in saying that it's the most expensive watch that Seiko currently sells to the general public. However, in the past, this luxury brand was a lot more affordable. The 6730 is a watch from the early 90s, and I dare say it's a Marmite in the looks department. You're either going to like this style or you're not, and I think that's a fair position either way. The dial of the watch centers around a slice of blue agate, making this one of the most affordables out there from a respected brand with a gemstone dial. So if you happen to like this Marmite, there's a potential bargain to be had here. I featured the San Martin Marble GMT model on my channel earlier in the year. It was a gift from my wife and is an important model to feature on the list because there are also lapis and adventuring dial variants of the same watch. I'm going to discuss the marble variant as it's the one that I own. And I would echo some of my previous sentiments made in my video regarding the gemstone. Given its patterning, it's entirely possible that you get a very different dial to the one you might be expecting. As with all gemstone watches, the dials are unique. With marble in particular, it's a far more tangible way than you might appreciate. You could get a dial with a huge amount of marbling, or one like mine with comparatively little. The specs on offer for the price point on these models is insane, but I would be tempted to advise looking at buying one second hand if you are concerned about the patterning you might get buying one blind from San Martin and their retail partner websites. You could make a convincing argument that D1 Milano are a fashion brand. And it's certainly true that this ultra thin is a quartz model with very obvious design inspirations. More than enough to call it a homage in my opinion. However, if you're willing to overlook that, this is one of the most affordable adventuring dial models that money can buy. In a perhaps unoriginal, but nonetheless appealing design package with razor thin proportions. I definitely would err on the side of calling this a fashion watch, as one downside to the model is that the polished hands on top of the adventuring dial can actually make it quite hard to tell the time in some lighting conditions. If this is a model that appeals to you, there's a full review on my channel if you want more information.
Crafted from a mosaic of inner abalone shell pieces, this style is technically an organic gem, hence its inclusion. The shell pieces are extremely iridescent, which makes for a really unique dial, but one that I feel needs plain flat colors on top of it, otherwise the watch becomes really difficult to read. I won't name and shame, but I looked at a fair few abalone dial watches, and even in the advertising imagery, the time wasn't as clear as it should be on many of them. No such issue with the Signum Cuda. There is a 40 and 44 mil version of this watch, and you can spec it with or without date. Personally, I'd be going for the 40 mil version with no date as it's set diagonally, but that's just preference and wrist size, and it's nice that they've tried to cater to a wide range of people with this model. As a brand, Holskern are best known for making wooden watches, which I think is a pretty niche area of the market, but I have to say I do quite like their dials featuring leaves like the Komarebi. I am a sucker for texture, as you'll know, and I just think this is a cool concept. I won't sugarcoat it though, I'm not a huge fan of the brand myself. They make a lot of watches, and I think there's some real highs and real lows among that output. However, if you want a watch made out of something unusual and interesting, you'd be mad to overlook them. The Aoraki is a chronograph with a fairly traditional design language, but the dial is made from lapis, a vivid, semi-precious stone. If you run a Google search for lapis dials, you'll see a lot of offerings from Holzkern. A few models that use the name to describe a colour rather than the gemstone, and then a significant gap in price until you come to models like the F77 from Nevada Grenchen. I have to say that I am not personally a fan of the look of this watch. It isn't necessarily dimensions, but the use of white space that feels ever so slightly wrong to me. So you might be questioning, well, if you don't really like it, why is it on the list? Well, that comes down to the dial material used, malachite. While I may not be enamored with this particular watch, one thing I can say for certain about it is that it easily outclasses its competition in the budget malachite dial stakes. This gemstone is a little pricier than some of the others featured, that's true, but it just seems to be a lot rarer in budget watches. If you like the look of this gemstone and want a real suggestion from me, the Formex Essence 39 would be my pick, but that is double the budget of this list, so I'm being a little cheeky talking about it here. Now, I'll be really honest, this is absolutely not a watch I would personally buy. Bling is definitely not my thing. However, in a video about gemstone dials, I think it would be disingenuous to completely ignore this style of watch. Knowing that I wanted to feature a blinged out model, I spent quite a while browsing through this style of watch as it isn't something I have any personal experience with. I arrived at this JBW model for a few reasons. The first being choice. There are three colorways available. They're named Ruby, Amethyst and Emerald but I'd note that none are the actual gems, but colored crystals. The second reason is that these do actually feature real diamonds for the indices, so there is some inherent value there to explain the price point. Yes, you could buy watches that look similar to this for a lot less, but the JBW boasts a two-year warranty as standard, which can be upgraded to an enhanced four-year option. Mother of Pearl is a gemstone material that is pretty synonymous with ladies' watches. Even unisex ranges like the PRX that feature Mother of Pearl are exclusively advertised using female models. I guess a lot of that association comes from the fact that the material literally features the word mother in the name. The Pacific Diver Ripple is a smaller range of unisex watches than traditional Luminox fare. 
but they still aren't exactly small, measuring in at 39mm in diameter and 12mm thick. The iridescent features of the material transfer to the dial, making for a unique on-wrist experience, with its coloration shifting between blues, pinks, whites and greens in a range of shimmering hues. Given that Mother of Pearl is made up of the lining of mollusks like oysters, it does feel at home on the dial of a dive watch like the Ripple. If you search for watches with a black onyx dial, it actually takes quite a bit of work to find one that isn't using that as a colour description and features the proper gemstone. The G Timeless range are a set of automatic unisex models, some of which feature different gemstone dials, the most unique of which is the black onyx. Given the coloration, I'm not too sure of the visual appeal here. I think this is a piece more suited to people who believe that gemstones have specific associated qualities than something that necessarily makes a huge amount of sense as a watch dial material. It's another one of those cases where I featured the watch on the list for the unique gemstone rather than it really being that much of an appealing offering to me at least. Long term viewers of the channel will know that I have a serious soft spot for Christopher Ward. Nevertheless, the Celeste is absolutely deserving of a place on this list. It is true that the brand have consistently moved further and further up market in recent years and their prices have increased to reflect that, but make no mistake, these are very high quality timepieces that rival considerably more expensive rivals in terms of their wearability, design and refinement. That isn't necessarily something that you can ascertain from images alone and I do appreciate that tangible experience is far better, but I think it's hard to argue with the Celeste as an all-round package. You're getting a well-respected Swiss movement, incredibly vivid adventuring on the dial, the perfect sizing for a dress watch at 36mm, and of course, Swiss made on the dial. Completely deserving of my recommendation for the video, and definitely something I would buy for myself. So, there we have it. My 10 suggestions for what I would consider to be the best gemstone dials currently available for less than $1,000. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the list. Are there watches here that you have personal experience with? Have you had positive or negative experiences with gemstone dials in general? And what are your favourites? Perhaps there is something you feel that I've overlooked that deserved a mention. Let me know in the comments section below. I welcome the discussion. I'll just finish by saying that I did have a good long look at other gemstones, like Tiger's Eye for example, but I couldn't find a single model that wasn't either outrageously expensive or hideous. I won't go so far as to make a tier list, but I think it's painfully clear to me that some gemstones simply make for much better dials than others. As ever, thank you for your time. If you've enjoyed what you've seen or found it informative, consider dropping the video a like and subscribing for more content like this in future.